Dr. Gidinji Gitahi, and I'm the global CEO for Amref Health Africa. But I am also a health envoy uh, for COP28 as well. Get up from there. Okay. So maybe you can give us in the context of Kenya why this is very important at this time, and what do you, as people who are in the climate and health mm -hmm. for COP this year and future You see, the climate crisis mm -hmm. uh, is coming as a result of the extreme usage of fossil fuels, the emission of what we call greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane and others, and this is creating the global warming, that warming is creating a, it's part of a rise in temperatures. That rise in temperatures results in disruption of weather patterns. That's why in Kenya we are experiencing extreme droughts but also extreme rainfall. And each of these creates a major challenge. On one side, when you have extreme drought, we have failure of crops, and this creates malnutrition for children, and also creates water scarcity, mental health challenges, and violence, as people are looking for food and water. On the other side, with extreme rainfall, it also results in crop failure, but also flooding. We have seen Kenya has lost more than 130 people recently to flooding. This flooding happens because of the global warming, accumulating a lot of water at the same time when the rainfall comes, it is too heavy. So other than those challenges, post the flooding, what we have seen in many countries, including Malawi and neighboring countries, is that it is followed by waterborne diseases, like cholera, disruption of water, and sanitation, mixing dirty water and clean water, and people having to consume that. And therefore we see that there is going to be a rise of cholera, post uh, you know, the flooding. But also we have seen that malaria is increasing. Malaria is increasing because malaria is actually transmitted by mosquitoes, which are responding to the warmer moisture, uh, warmer moist temperature by moving to areas where they were not. We always knew of what we call malaria endemic areas. But those are no longer the ones that we are referring to because those are there. But the new areas that were not endemic to malaria are now having malaria. How does the health system respond? So the reason we are talking about this is that we already have a very fragile health system. We are trying to build it and protect it. Climate crisis is actually going to dismantle it and make our work even more difficult. So a government response, all of government response, ministries of health being on the table for policy, Ministry of Environment, Agriculture, everybody, water and sanitation being together. It's not only a plant and animals crisis, it is actually front line human health crisis. Mm -hmm. yes. Are there any challenges in terms of implementing the solutions that you guys have tabled at the ministerial in Malawi, uh, climate summit and all here? I think the first and foremost, the biggest challenge that we have had is policy paralysis or recognition that health is really truly the, you know, the human face of the climate crisis. We've seen more focus on energy, which is critical, uh, just transition. We've seen more energy on ending fossil fuels, which is critical, and that must be the long-term solution. But we are not seeing enough policy decisions on protecting what is already going on. Because the warming is not a futuristic thing, it is here with us. It is no longer a risk, it's a reality. So as we drive the world towards a just transition to renewable energy, the government must recognize that at the same time, we must protect communities, because the lives we have now are the lives we will need tomorrow. So if we don't protect them, eventually when we lower the temperature, who are we lowering it for? So we need to realize that both adapting and strengthening health systems and communities is as important as reducing the greenhouse gases by ending fossil fuel uh, madness. So these two must go together. The challenge we are seeing is that there, are no, you know, there is no emergency in protecting people and health systems. Okay. Uh, maybe the last question, does the health and climate caucus have a plan in including health as a future agenda in one of the negotiation groups? Because right now we just have it as a health day, which is really important. 